Hi, welcome to our embroidery stitch along. So each week we're gonna do something together and then you're gonna have all week to practice and complete that task. I'm really excited you're here because when I was probably about your age, I started doing embroidery and I really am self-taught. So a lot of this was just me watching um, my mom do it. And then now there's a YouTube video for everything. So I can find new ideas and learn the technical names of the stitches when I need to. So first of all, what is embroidery? So this is a project that I'm currently working on. You probably saw it in the video to advertise this. So I drew this, I do this all the time to my students. It means I love you and I'm working on it right now. So I'm gonna go over today the tools that you're gonna need. And if you don't have them, that'll give you this week to get them. And I'm also gonna just give you some of the language that we'll be using in the next nine weeks. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a hoop. So you'll find, I'm using a six inch hoop. You'll find bigger, smaller ones. They um, come in plastic and wood. There's even very um, pretty decorative ones so that when you finish your piece, you can put it on the wall and it kind of looks like a frame. I don't really have a preference on which one I use. They both work great. Um, so I can find these at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Walmart, Walmart's probably the best, cheapest place to go. And the next thing you're going to need is some type of fabric. So you do not have to have this much fabric. I mean, we're only going to be using a square like this. So it could be something that you have, but you want it to be like a quilter's cotton. So not a knit, nothing that has a lot of stretch to it. 100% um, cotton. Usually you'll find, this is easy to find at more like Hobby Lobby and Joann's Fabrics. Um, then the next thing you're going to need is a needle. So this is the needles and they come in different sizes. I, when I was a kid, I didn't really know anything about sizes, but you're just going to find one that's going to work for you. And so the part of the needle that you're going to put the thread through is called the eye. It's very small at the top and it's just a little oval that you're going to put the thread through. So that's probably one of the hardest parts and you can find these little tools. Um, I found them online, but Walmart has them also. They're in silver. This makes your job so much easier. So I will teach you how to do that when I'm just focused on my hands. I feel like it's such a small thing that you don't need to see all this. So I'll go back and I'll teach you how to thread the needle because you're gonna practice that this week. And then you're gonna have to get some embroidery floss. We call this floss, not like the dance move, but thread. And this is one of my favorite brands, it's DMC. They come like this and I'm gonna teach you how to store them. Honestly, I have a mess sometimes if I don't store them correctly. So we're going to learn how to store our floss. This is one of my ways that I store my floss is I have little plastic cards that you wrap it around. But I've recently um, found a new idea from um, somebody I follow called the Barmy Fox and she does all kinds of stitch alongs. So I've been learning a lot from her. So just as you are a learner, I'm a learner also. Let's think the next thing you're going to need is patience. You're gonna make mistakes and that is okay. You're just gonna keep on going. I forgot to um, tell you another thing that I recently found that I want you guys to have is the Pilot Frixon, Frixon um, pens. So they look like this. They're erasable pens and we're gonna draw our design with this and then you're going to apply an iron after and it'll erase the lines. When I was a kid, I'm gonna show you a project from when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I didn't have, or we didn't really ever make our own, draw our own um, patterns. We usually bought a tracer that we ironed on and it would give you pink lines like this. And so your 
ideas were stuck to what you could find. But I wanted to show you a couple of these because when I was your age, these are the things that I was working on. I really should probably make a quilt or do something with these because they're a little nostalgic. And I think the most fun is picking the thread color. It's sort of like doing a coloring book. You get to pick it all. And so my stitches that I used on this were probably the same stitches over and over. He's my daughter. Um, and I have now found that I like to create and draw my own patterns and get inspiration. I'm really into flowers, so I love flowers. And let's see, I'm going to now show you my hands on how to do a few things. All right, so let's get started. So if you have a pair of sewing scissors, fabric scissors, first off, they're different than your normal scissors and don't use them on paper because you will ruin them. So I highly encourage you to have just to cut that out and also for the floss. So let's talk about how we are going to put our fabric piece on the hoop. So this part right here unscrews. So left D is loosen and it will come all the way apart. And that's when we're gonna put our fabric on one side of the hoop and then this one's gonna go on the outside. So I might need to open it up a little bit. And then we're gonna place that on. Notice I'm not using white or ivory. You can use all kinds of colors. And I would not recommend a pattern the first time, but you can even use like a fabric that has a light pattern. Um, you're gonna tighten it. And then as you can, just pull until it's nice and tight. We want it to be, want it to have a little bit of a drum sound. So we're just gonna keep pulling. That's nice, see how nice and taut that is? So that's setting up the fabric on the hoop. The next thing I wanted to show you was how to thread a needle. And look at the, um, let's look at the floss a little bit more careful. So they come in these um, packages and you can just slide off the paper. Um, sometimes if you want to go back to that same color, you need to make sure that you write down the number that the floss is. So like this one is 115. And there's two ways to do it. So I had talked to you about this is how I currently keep my floss. And then that's the number of floss in case I run out and I wanted that same exact color. And they also have paper versions of these. Um, according to some other embroidery, um, they tend to make the floss have little kinks. So sometimes people are using clothespins now. And so a good habit to get into is to write that number down on your clothespin. And then you're gonna undo your thread like this to make a circle and then you're gonna take the whole thing apart. Now you could pull it, but that's when we start getting a little bit of kinks in it. So just take it all apart carefully. Try not to get any knots. One of the things with this oh, hobby is that you do make mistakes and you make mistakes probably at any level. You just have to know how to work around the mistakes or hide your mistakes and that's, one thing I want you to know that it's gonna be a frustrating process in the beginning. Um, the nice thing is you can put it down and you can come back to it. So I'm gonna put my end of my floss so that it's right between that little clip right there. And I am gonna hold on to it. And then I'm just gonna take it and twirl it all around. One of the 
things that I like about this hobby and I come and go. It's one thing that I will do a lot and then sometimes I'll forget about it and then I'll go back to it. But you can really take this anywhere. It's not a huge amount of supplies, especially when you know, oh, I'm gonna be working on a flower and it's pink. You just take the pink with you. And sometimes my New Year's resolution is to get off of my phone, like get off of Facebook. So this is one of those great things to keep your hands busy. And you get something so beautiful in the end. The sad thing is a lot of times I actually give away my art. Um, it just makes my heart happy. So I have done like home pictures for people. I have um, seen where you can embroider like a denim jacket. Oh, don't pull it, honey. It's my daughter's here. This is what I'm talking about. It's always a constant. You're going to have to troubleshoot through all the issues. So thread likes to get into a knot. So um, what I was saying was I've seen where they've done like Converse or denim jackets. That will be later when you have your skill set and you have to think about how thick those fabrics are. So. That's the new way to store your floss. So when we look at the floss a little bit more deeper, let's see if I can show you this. One strand is actually made up of six tiny little strings. So sometimes you'll see where embroidery artists will take that and split it and use only three of the strings at a time. We are not gonna do any of that. That's just one more layer. That'll be later. So the next thing I wanted to show you was threading a needle. And this is something you're gonna to need to practice this week. I would like you to have this set up and your tools organized. So I think it's easier when I have this black paper here. And so if you can see the tiny little needle, I'm gonna find my, we'll just say we need this nice light green color. I don't recommend you getting a ton. I think that um, maybe the arm to the elbow is all enough for right now. The more string, the more you're going to have to keep up with. So this is a neat little tool. You just slide the needle into there. Oops, let me see, let's do that again. You just slide this tool into the needle. You put your string inside that diamond shape and then you pull. It's gonna take some muscle. What? I just broke the needle. So sad. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to use a different size needle this time. If that happens, I'm thinking because it's actually six strands, that might be part of it. I'm going to use a different size. This one looks like it has a bigger eye opening. So place that part into... place the, I actually do use my mouth to lick that usually to put the thread and make it all nice together. I know, gross, young habit. All right, let's try this. We might need to learn how to, if we're gonna use this tool, we might need to learn how to thread or to split that. I'm not making this look easy, am I? Oh, there we go. It's not easy. That's why it's your homework this week. So once you have it on, I usually leave a little tail. So this part I just leave like this. Sorry, I'm not really giving you the best view. And then we have to put a knot at the other end. 
but put a knot at the other end because we don't want it to go through the fabric. So for example, let me show you. Right now, if you put this, it doesn't stop. You need to have a knot so that it'll stop. So I always do the same knot. It's probably what I learned when I was little, but I will do it fast and then I'll slow it down and show you. So I just take it and twirl it around my finger and then push the tail in and tie. Mm. Let me show you that again, that wasn't good. All right, now I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna do a different piece of string also. All right, slow, I'm gonna slow it down. I make a circle. Then I push this tail in the middle of the circle and I pull. And as you get stronger with your ability to tie, you'll be able to force that knot to go down closer to the bottom. So I'm gonna do it again. Make a circle. And then push that tail into there. So now I have a knot at the end of my string. And we're gonna use this pen to draw on our hoop. And we're gonna learn six basic stitches and we're not gonna use a ruler for this. This is just for fun. I view this as like your practice, your sketchbook. So the nice thing is once we um, finish, we can just iron these and the pen, the pen marks will go away. So we're gonna learn One of the weeks we're gonna learn something called a French knot. So that's gonna be dots. We're just gonna put a few dots. There is a way, so one, two, three, four, five. There is a way to trace a pattern onto your fabric, one that you would print out. So the Barmy Fox, she does that a lot. And she places the pattern under here and then she traces it. So that would be a lot easier maybe with a white or a light fabric. But for right now, this is what we're gonna focus on. And every week, I'm gonna pick a different color thread. So I kind of already picked out my color palette. I liked all of those colors together. Maybe I'll add in a couple more, but I picked out colors that I thought would go. And so every week, we're just gonna focus on one different type of stitch and so today in review, you should know how to put your fabric on your hoop. You should know how to organize your thread with what tools you have. If you have none of these, this is fine. By the way, you can find the clothespins in the laundry section at Walmart, very cheap. You don't have to do this though. If you wanna just put it in a Ziploc bag, that works also. I would like you to have your lines on your fabric. And I would like you to know how to thread your needle and tie a knot at the end. The other way to do a needle, I'm gonna show you that also just in case you have the same issues with this little tool that I thought was amazing, but this is why I probably don't use it. The other way to thread your needle is to, I need to get a needle. Okay, here we go. So I'll, I'll do it the way I do it almost every time. First of all, it is helpful to have the end cut and trimmed very nice. So that's where those fabric scissors come into play. 
they will cut this so much nicer than paper scissors. And then I, this is horrible with COVID, but I just lick the end and kind of bring all those little six strands together. And then I just do it by hand. I just go in and try my hardest. The problem is you want all six strands to go in. So if you have something where they don't all go in, I lick it again and then I put it in. It's not, it doesn't happen the first time, every time. And if you find a needle that has a bigger eye, that's usually the, the best thing. But you don't want it to be too big because then that's when you're gonna leave big holes in your fabric. This is not going so well. It's all right, this is real life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see if this size is better. Looks like it might be. I usually use three strands also instead of this whole six. This is a really thick piece of floss to add to. Oh yeah, this is not going so good. So this week, when you're doing this and you realize this is hard, just remember, these are not sewing scissors, by the way. Just remember, it's hard for Miss Myers too sometimes. And I just keep going. Maybe I put it down. My eyesight's getting worse. There we go. I said I spoke too soon. All right, y'all. I'm gonna sign off. And in this process, I'm gonna figure out this needle. This is what you don't want. It's also, so there's three strands. See, that's probably what I'm used to is the three strands. Homework, my homework too. All right, so how we're gonna work the questions, I'm gonna give up on this for a minute. How we're gonna work questions is, if you just wanna ask me in the Google Classroom, the next time I film, I will answer the questions or I will respond to you in the Google Classroom. Um, I'd love to see your pictures, anything you wanna add. And until then, bye bye